Chopper Demon Hunter after the nerf, it's uh, still a very strong deck. The only thing that got nerfed was the 4 mana weapon. Here it is, Umpire's Grasp. This thing used to be a 3 mana, but it uh, still proves to be quite the strong card even after the nerf, sitting at uh, above 57% with above 1000 games for the last few days. So definitely still pretty good. Uh, the cards we have in here, we have a couple of zero through Felon Flames. This card is a very cheap way for you to actually be uh, controlling the board without actually wasting uh, damage that can otherwise go face. Like uh, giving a minion a rush is always a cool thing to be doing, especially as soon as turn 4 now. With the uh, Shopper, you can uh, drop a discounted Shopper for uh, only 3 mana, play a mini. And actually use the zero mana through Felon Flame and suddenly you have a turn 4, 6-5. Uh, that is actually a 7-6 now through the Felon Flame because you do the finale usually with it. Uh, and you can control the board with this man nice and well. Uh, so that's a great way for you to actually uh, control the board without actually uh, losing damage. Uh, we have a couple of Burning Hearts. This is mainly used to gain extra face damage usually. You could also use it straight up just to control the board, however, if you really want to be removing something like uh, the Gold Banner, like the Zero Two Totem that draws cards. You could be uh, using this straight up just for uh, uh, removal like that. Uh, but it's generally in here, so you can actually get one mana plus three attack on your hero and uh, usually close off the opponent quicker, or just do some value trades with your weapon in certain cases. That can also work. Uh, we have a couple of drone deconstructors in here, and they can give you uh, all sorts of uh, cool mechs to magnetize with. Uh, the main big one would be uh, Stealth or Wind Fury. And if you get one of those, you can make some massive plays with the help of your Zilliax. And the Zilliax we're using here is the one that deals 3 damage at the end of your turn on your face, and also at the start of your turn, uh, double this minion's attack. So. Uh, imagine you actually coin out a turn free Zilliax. He straight up comes down on the board as a uh, five, 5 7. At the start of your next turn, this thing is already at 10 7. If you have Wind Fury on it from the Drone Deconstructor, you literally deal turn 4 22 damage because you also magnetize a 1 1. And if that thing has the Wind Fury, that's literally 22 damage on turn 4. Or if you get Stealth. You just attack with the Zilliax for 10 damage, you give it Stealth, and next turn it's gonna double up into a 22 damage with Stealth. And on turn 4, not many classes can actually deal with a Stealthed 8 health minion, you know? Uh, so the Drone Deconstructor like that is a hell of a fine game plan, but you can also uh, just use those 1-1s one uh, to tempo out some uh, stats, even on your 1-2s, even on your 2-1 Oscillators. Uh, so yeah, that's the main benefit through Drone Deconstructor. Frequency Oscillator is uh, pretty nice in the deck because uh, it gives you a discount on your next mech uh, that you play, not on this turn, but entirely in the game. Uh, so if you're smart about it and you actually manage to discover a mech Pterodon out of your window shopper or from the mini, that's gonna discount the mech Pterodon down to 2 mana if you uh, got this down to 3 mana with the weapon. Umpire's Grab gives you... Uh, this for only 3 mana, so you discover a 3 mana Mac Pterodon, which also goes down to 2 mana Mac Pterodon if you manage to actually play a Frequency Oscillator beforehand. Or, okay. if you uh, use the 1 mana Mini, and that discovers you a Mac Pterodon for 1 mana, it's actually going to be a 0 mana Mac Pterodon, again, because you managed to play an Oscillator and not play another Mac uh, afterwards. And that can be a very nice turn 4 Mac Pterodon, like, uh, let's say you coin out a turn 3 Umpire's Grasp, you swing on that turn, you swing on turn 4 as well, that draws you a 3 mana window shopper, you play it, you discover something, doesn't matter, but you also play a 1 mana mini, and if that discovers you a 1 mana Macterodon, you actually get to drop it as soon as turn 4, because the frequency oscillator. And uh, Macterodon is uh, not a card you run in the deck, but it is uh, basically your best thing you can uh, discover. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> Spare's not a best, best card in the game, but literally not a single person plays it. So yeah, this is the one mana you can discover. At the end of your turn, deal free damage to all enemies uh, while this is dormant. So basically you get a zero mana, deal six damage to everything uh, 
across the next two turns and that's just insane you know like six damage you can't do shit about it too like uh the only way you can actually remove th this thing would be with uh uh reno and uh yeah it's, it's just uh it's just the main reason why shopper demon hunter is so good right now is because there's not that many demons in the game and you basically get to discover uh mac pterodons over and over again with window shoppers and their minis okay we also have a couple of Miracle Salesmen in here, generally just a straight up a beefy boy, a 1 mana 2-2 two -two is considered pretty premium. And it also gives you a 0 mana tradable with which you can cycle your cards a bit better, uh, so that can also help. We have a couple of red cards, and the, the usual way how you want to be using the red card is for you to actually give your Mecterodon another dormant uh, batch of turns for a couple of turns, so you can actually get that 3 damage 2 more times, uh, like that. You can obviously use this uh, to dormant something uh, big for the opponent as well. Like, let's say if they play a big fat 8-8 taunt against you, it's a good idea to just slap a red card on it so it can chill for a couple of turns and you can keep on waltzing face. But yeah, like I said, you usually are looking to play this on your mech pterodon, but you could be flexible about it. We have a couple of Taste of Chaos. It's basically uh, dealing the same damage like your Burning Heart. But if you get a finale on this, it can also discover you an extra fell spell, and you can uh, get some pretty nasty things uh, with the help of this, like a uh, two mana chaos creation that can draw you some uh, uh, cards. You could get some AOE. Let me just uh, show you all the all the spells that are out there right now uh, for Demon Hunter that you could be discovering. Spell, uh, spell school. Fell, 11 fell spells. So yeah, you can discover an extra through fell and flames, which is pretty nice. Uh, you cannot discover an extra taste of chaos. This used to be a thing that uh, we could have done before. Like you can discover the same card through a discover card and that proved to be hella toxic because if the discover pool is super small, you basically discovered infinite, infinity uh, certain super powerful discover cards like that and that was no fun. You can discover an extra metamorphosis like that, which is basically 10 damage for 6 mana across 2 turns. Uh, this is the chaos strike I was talking about. Gives you plus 2 attack, also draws you a card. Fan the hammer, not exactly amazing, but it can also be uh, kind of cool, because you could even uh, kill the opponent this way. Sigil of Time, you usually don't really have time to be spending 3 mana on drawing 3 cards like that, but in certain matchups it could be a good idea, like let's say against the Warrior you might end up uh, needing that extra gas. Emulation or is not a bad AoE if you uh, are against something like a Zerimi Priest, that can be hella fine. If you're in a mirror matchup, discovering this could be hella good. Just don't forget this thing actually needs to be outcasted for it to actually gain lifesteal. And um, yeah, it deals 5 damage to a minion, and the excess damage goes to both neighbors. Hey, look at that, another uh, cleave card you should be playing around. So uh, again, positioning with this could be uh, important if you actually use your location wisely and separate uh, two minions on each side instead of three on one, one on the other. The opponent will not be able to cleave more than two like that. I-Beam is another decent cheap way for you to get some uh, lifesteal like that, it only costs one mana if it's outcasted. The problem is, you are discovering it with a finale card, Taste of Chaos, so uh, you're not going to be able to have this outcasted on the turn you discover it. I mean, you will, but you won't be able to play it because you're not going to have any mana unless you saved up the coin just for that. We also have Load the Chambers, not exactly an amazing card to have. And also Fell Fissures does not really speak to you as well, because you are trying to build a board and this damages all minions, yours included, so... Not super amazing, but in certain cases, like if you're not planning on playing much and you're against a board-centric uh, deck like uh, Counter, like Zerimi Priest, it could actually make sense. But it's usually not something you pick up. We also have a couple of instrument decks. They're obviously in here, so you can always have your umpire's grasp on curve. So holding onto these in your mulligan phase is usually a pretty good idea. Parsh Desperado, it's a nice Naga uh, that also gives you extra attack, like two mana free two. That alone is a uh, pretty vanilla stats. Like it's not amazing on its own like that, but also giving you plus three attack. That's that's a lot of extra damage. And in the end of the day, you're trying to burn your opponent's face nice and quick with the help of all of that damage. Like, the Burning Heart is like that in there for that reason. The Part of Desperado, Spirit of the Team is also like that. And you saw we're discovering a bunch of Mac that also deal a bunch of damage easily. 
So that can also be great. And let's not forget Umpire's Grasp is also basically 12 damage across 4 turns if you get both the weapons. So there's that too. We have a couple of Spirits of the team. This thing is always going to be giving you plus 2 attack on your turn. Uh, as long as it remains alive on the board and if the opponent uh, wants to remove it, they are going to have to spend some resources on it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty cheap way for you to get uh, a bunch of attack across several turns, usually because the opponent uh, doesn't have an easy time actually removing this, especially if you use the, the attack to actually control the boards. We also have a couple of ball hogs, a nice way for you to actually heal up a bunch. They have the battle cry and the death rattle to deal the damage on the lowest health enemy. So you are going to have to be smart about how you uh, play with this card. And another cool thing you could be doing with this guy is you can actually play the ball hog on turn 3 or turn 4 if you have the coin. And actually use a 0 mana through Felon Flames if you're really in a pinch for healing. And that way you heal for free damage. You give it plus 1 plus 1 and rush. You attack into something. And if you actually die with this guy you deal the free damage again. So that's literally 10 healing and 10 damage on the board as soon as turn 3 or turn 4 if you really need that healing. So that can be a cool way of... Uh, for you to do some stuff. Uh, we also have Kane Sun Fury in here, basically so you can waltz face against things like Warlock that can be playing some very nasty, literally 15-15 taunts as soon as turn 5 or 6 if they get lucky. Uh, so this way you ensure the face is always operational. Uh, we also have the 4 mana Metamorphosis straight up, and as you saw you can also discover it through Taste of Chaos. So Metamorphosis can be quite cool here. Uh, and the cool thing about this thing is if it's actually turn 6, uh, you can uh, use your 1 mana 1 damage hero power, then play the 4 mana metamorphosis and use the new hero power on the same turn as well. And another cool thing is, like I said, we can discover a second one from Taste of Chaos. If you've actually already played metamorphosis and it's turn 6, I don't know, uh, like, you could use the 5 damage hero power from the old Metamorphosis, then play the new Metamorphosis you've discovered, and that's gonna refresh your hero power. So you can literally deal 10 damage with hero powers across uh, a single turn like that, if you uh, manage to discover a second Metamorphosis, which can be a cool little way to get some lethal outs. We also have Pazic in here. It's a pretty nice anti-tempo card, like it, it's not an amazing tempo for you, but it's a hell of an uh, anti-tempo for the opponent, because you give them a couple of free frees do nothing, which are really not something they usually want to have, and you also stick a 4-4 on the board, which is going to be attacking face unless they actually deal with it, and if they deal with it, it's going to summon you a, the couple of free frees you actually gave them. The reason why Pazic fits so well in this card is, again, uh, Mac Pterodon. Like, if you have a Mac Pterodon up your sleeve, or you're planning on discovering one real soon, if you give them the free free bots and the opponent actually decides it's a good idea to play the bots instead of actually doing something smart, uh, you basically clear them for free with the help of Mac Pterodon, and that's even more anti-tempo for them. Like, they literally have to spend six mana playing free free do-nothings, in order for you just to play your amazing Mac Pterodon that you would have played anyway. And uh, yeah, that's why Pazic fits so well in this one. Uh, we have a couple of weapons in here, obviously. Not much to talk about them. Yeah, it used to be a 3, now it's a 4. It's still pretty good. And uh, the way the opponent is going to try to play around your weapon is they're going to try and freeze your face over and over again with the help of things like Glacial Shores, like things like uh, the Quartz Size Crusher for the Death Knight. And uh, yeah, they're, they're going to try to not allow you to attack as much, so you can actually not get a cheap window shopper super early. We already talked about Zilliax and how strong it can be. Uh, it's a mech, it can get magnetized crap on it, it's basically a, a single-handedly a win condition on its own, because if you tempo this as soon as turn 3, a lot of opponents actually cannot deal with that. And uh, slapping the opponent for 10 extra damage with a deck like this, I mean it's not going to be very hard for you to deal the rest of the 20 damage, so... That's why it's super powerful with these modules. And lastly, we have the Window Shoppers, which, like we said, we obviously usually want to be discovering Mac Pterodons through them. And uh, let me show you the other the other things you could be discovering through this. Why the fuck is Patches showed here? It's standard only. Why the fuck is Patches here, man? Okay, whatever. So, uh, the demons you could discover would be uh, Battle Fiend. That's usually useless. Mac Pterodon, absolutely MVP. 
Eladari Inquisitor is great to discover from the 6-5 uh, window shopper, but not from the 1-1. From the 1-1, it's just gonna be a 1-1. It's still a little bit of extra damage, like it could be the most useful out of the useless uh, stuff you could discover, but usually you want to be getting this through the big one and not through the small one. Macterodon, you usually want to get through either of them. Abyssal Basis is another thing you want to be getting from the big one, not from the small one, because from the big one, if you've actually equipped a weapon and drew a free mana window shopper like that, the Abyssal Basis is going to be a one mana like that, because uh, it got discounted through the weapon once, and from the window shopper another time, so that's minus five. What? It, it's... Uh, it's gonna be a free mana for I mean it's not a seven to begin with, it's a five or a three. So if you discovered it for a free mana, it also goes down minus two. Uh to all all the way down to only one mana. And if you've actually equipped both weapons, it even goes down to zero mana from the second batch of window shopper. Uh Observer of Mysteries is usually a great card to discover through uh, both the big and the small. It's gonna be useful in both cases. Ganarg is usually something you'd rather discover through the small one. It's okay from the big one as well. It still gives you a little bit of extra damage like that if you manage to outcast it, but through the small one. Like, don't forget you actually need to outcast this, so uh, it is going to be tricky to outcast it if you discover it through the big one, so there's that. Eye of Shadow could be important, especially in the mirror matchup against hunters. Like, lifesteal would be a lifesaver in some cases. Uh, and same can be said for Mythical Terror. Uh, the mythical terror you want to be discovering usually only through the help of the the big window shopper, not through the mini. And the order in which the idiots are going to be attacking into this mythical terror is going to be in the order in which they actually landed on the board. So that's important for you to actually try and reverse uh, engineer what actually happened on the opponent's board, and that way you can uh, figure out in which order order your 6-5 Mythical Terror, because you discover it through this, uh, is going to be getting uh, attacked from the opponent's minions. And that way you can actually decide how you can make the trades. Like if there's a 5-attack a minion on the board and you actually have means to kill it, and that was the first thing that's going to be attacking your Mythical Terror, maybe you should be killing it, or maybe you should give it a red card or something. And that way you can ensure that the Mythical Terror takes more than one hit. And that's going to give you a lot of extra lifesteal. Uh, why the fuck are we seeing which would... Piper, this is not in standard right now. What the hell? This is so buggy. Anyway, uh, Tough <laughs> Crowd is another thing that's usually great to discover with uh, the one mana uh, window shopper. And you could actually uh, get Tough Crowd and bounce the one one mini from the window shopper again. If you didn't manage to discover the, de the demon that you did not uh, get to see. And the demon usually is Mactaradon. Like you usually are really trying hard to find the Mactaradon on time. So you could actually use Tough Crowd over and over again until you can actually find Mactaradon like that. If you keep on getting proposed Tough Crowd instead of it. You can just cycle like that. It is costing you like uh, a couple of mana each time. But it still uh, could be the best thing you could be doing in certain cases. And the last demon you could discover would be the Eredar Deceptor, and that's usually useless in both cases, but in uh, certain situations, like if you're against a token hunter, it might actually make a very good amount of sense, because it gives you 1-1 one, one rushers, and you could deal with a bunch of 3-1 uh, germongers like that, so that can also be pretty good. As for the matchups, here's what the situation shows. You're going to be 50-50 against nowadays spell token hunters. Rainbow Death Knight apparently is not going to be your friend, and the main reason for that is... Uh, right now there's a bug, and uh, when Death Knight actually discovers, uh, with the help of uh, their Runes of Darkness, if one of the discovered weapons is actually their 4-mana uh, Quartzite Crusher, all of the other options of the weapons are gonna get the ability to freeze. That's a fucked up bug right now, and it basically ensures that the uh, Death Knight is not going to be allowing you to attack a bunch of times, so you're not going to have a great time dropping your window shoppers quickly, so I'm assuming that's why this matchup is so, so bad right now. It used to be not great, but now it's just horrible because of that, probably. And also Highlander Warrior is not going to be your friend in most cases, but the rest is decent from the popular matchups at least. Here's what it looked like for the last 30 days, like, here's the reason why this deck got actually nerfed. Literally didn't have a bad matchup. Yeah, Rainbow Death Knight was a 50-50, but now uh, with the weapon a little bit more increased, some of these matchups are a little bit close to 50 or even a little bit under. 
As for the mulligan, here's what the stats show. Going first, you are gonna be looking for uh, a decent one drop like Drone Constructor, like Miracle Salesman, like Oscillator. Those would be your best one drops, but try not to keep more than one unless those are actually Frequency Oscillator and Drone Deconstructor. Like against certain matchups, it could actually be a good idea to turn one Oscillator into Drone Deconstructor and try to tempo the shit out of them. Like if you get Wind Fury out of this, you can uh, give on turn 2 Wind Fury on your Frequency Oscillator and suddenly you have like uh, 7 damage as soon as turn 2 ready to go face, so that can be something. But uh, Miracle Salesman is also pretty nice on its own, but try not to keep more than 1-1 one, one drop if you already have Miracle Salesman in there. Uh, instrument Tech is usually always gonna be a good idea, so uh, try to keep 1. Depending on the matchup through Fell and Flames might make some sense, like if it's gonna be a board-centric matchup, this is a great way for you to actually control the board. Even though going first, uh, I would usually drop this one. Going second might make more sense because that's the situation where the opponent is actually going to have something on the board already. Whereas when you're going first, you're going to be using this on turn two, maybe. Uh, so you can actually destroy a turn uh, one play from the opponent. He could have coined out something, obviously, but still, it's a little bit sketchy. Umpire's Grasp is something you can keep if you already don't have your uh, instrument deck. If you do have the instrument tech, it's probably a better idea to just drop the Empire's Grasp so you don't actually accidentally top deck the second copy and suddenly instrument tech becomes a 2 mana 1 to do nothing, which is definitely not something we're keen on. And Spirit of the Team is also not something that horrible to hold on to. The rest, you probably gotta have a good reason to consider them, you usually are not gonna be looking for them. As for on the coin, the situation is not that different, but here, like I said, through Fell on Flame becomes a lot more keepable. Zilliax becomes a lot more keepable because you can coin him out as soon as turn 3. Bullhog feels a little bit questionable to straight up keep, honestly, and as you can see a lot of people do not keep it, but the win rate is actually decent when they do, so a little bit of conflicting stats there, I'm really not sure if it's that right of an idea. Parse Desperado could be a nice tempo play, you could literally do this as soon as turn 1 and actually stick a free 2 and a half free attack on it so you can actually clear something important for the opponent. But it's, again, usually something I wouldn't really hold on to that much, personally. Uh, the two mechs are still decent. Umpire's Grasp becomes even more keepable than your instrument deck here, because you're on the coin here, so you'd rather just coin this out on turn 3. So you could just straight up hold on to Umpire's Grasp, and if you already have one... I mean, I would still keep instrument deck over it. Yeah, like, if you already have instrument deck, I would drop the Empire's Grasp. If you don't have the instrument deck, you're definitely holding on to Empire's Grasp. And the rest, as you can see, your Miracle Salesman is not that amazing going first. Uh, so that's something to consider in certain cases, I guess. People still keep the shit out of it, but the win rate for them is not that amazing going second, because it's already going to be contested on the board by something stupid like a 2-1, you know? So there's that as well. Uh, something I noticed we didn't talk about is uh, we're not seeing the Amalgam Band here, which is kind of weird. Amalgam Band... It's not considered a demon or something. There it is, the one Amalgam Band. That's weird. Like, this this site is all over the place today. Uh, this is another card that you could discover through your Window Shopper, and it's actually could be a win condition on its own, because you actually have plenty of different uh, minions in the deck. Like, you have mechs, uh, you have uh, Nagas, you have Quillbores, you have uh, Undeads. That's about it through your straight up things you have, but you can also, uh, as you saw through the, through the Window Shopper, you could discover one mana Amalgam Band, that can be discovered as an extra tribe. You could discover... what else was in there, like, you could discover beasts, you could discover uh, demons, beasts... Yeah, this thing is a demon and a beast. So uh, you could actually have a very, very populated Amalgam Band. And if you get Stealth, Wind Fury, Lifesteal, Divine Shield, Reborn, uh, Rush, it becomes a very big force to be reckoned with. In some cases, it might actually win you the game. So uh, that's also something to look out for as a potential game plan if the going gets tough. That's about it for the deck. Uh, it's not exactly super complicated. It only has four legendaries in here, even though it says five. Uh, deck, uh, deck HS replay is kind of buggy. It considers Zilliax to be two legendaries. Uh, so yeah, right now it's still doing quite well. Uh, and you can definitely be hitting legend with this one as well, or climbing high legend with it too. Okay, that's gonna be it for the guide. Now let's check out some of them games. I mean, they might have actually fixed it or... Wow, we're gonna queue into every warrior in the game right now. Is that how it's gonna go, Liz? Uh, it might actually be fixed, I'm not sure. 
I think there was some hotfix. Yeah, I did see an update last night. Maybe it was a part of it. Hopefully it was, because that's hella dumb. Out of these is just a frequency oscillator, right? Okay. Oh, can hell. Living the glamorous, glamorous family life, aren't we? Jesus. Okay. What are we doing over there? Well, let's just curve out with the oscillator for now. On turn 3, we're probably coining out the Empire's Grasp. If nothing better presents itself, next turn might be a 2 mana spirit of the team. That's about it. That's about it. Yeah, let's go with the spirit of the team on the right side. So if you generate a minion, the stealth minion goes in the middle. Not that it matters, this thing does a stealth next turn anyway, but yeah, get it. And go face, yeah. Technically, we could have considered using the zero mana through Fell on Flame on the 2 1 just so it became a little bit more attacky, but uh, we already attacked with it, so no reason to consider it anymore. I don't, I don't think we would have done it, but it was something to consider at least. Yeah. Does that change anything? Nah. Mm, does that change anything? Does it? How does he deal with a fat Zilliax right now? I grow impatient. He shouldn't be able to deal with it super, super early. I'm willing to give it a try. Yeah, try play the Zilliax on the right side. And uh, give the zero to the two one, I'd say. Yeah, give the z the zero to the two one. Rush down the free free with that, and your face goes first to damage. Okay, right now he needs at least two cars to handle this fat zilly. You could get lucky and actually top deck drone deconstructor and get hella lucky with a wind fury or at least stealth. Um, a shield perfect. slam or something. I mean, even if he has shield slam, he's gonna have to work quite a lot for it. Like, he's gonna have to at least have shield block and hero power. I mean, he can't even hero power. There you fucking go. It sticks for Tanner. Oh, sweet. Sick. You ready? Uh, let's equip the weapon. Should we consider pointing out an extra one drop on the board? This guy drew with Steam Guardian, so he could actually have a five mana... Um, summon six one ones that that grow. Okay. What's that gonna leave him with? Uh, he's gonna be left with a five five. We're gonna be left with nothing. Patient. Would that change if we coin out a salesman? It could. It could allow us to actually kill the last guy. Yeah, let's coin out a miracle salesman on the right side as well. And slap him like you mean it. Alright. Those guys so, are a lot less healthy than the last one. Alright, this is his big turn. Before he gets messed could up for good. Could be, right now, uh... Yeah, he fucking got oh, lucky the trial indeed. He got giga lucky there, not gonna lie. Okay. We're still left with this 2 2 idiot on the board for a little bit of extra. Yeah, now you come, you piece of shit. Oh, oh man, that was a lucky. So, right now we do not have a discount. So, we would rather go face with the weapon first. And let's play the free mana window shop where we top deck. Wait. That toy was made just for me. Uh, out of these, Eladari Inquisitor, 8 mana. Played a 1 mana mini on the right side. I'm the perfect toy for you. Oh, there he is. He is in all his glory. Yeah, whip out Magteridon, oh, nice. put it between the 6 5 and the 1 1. And uh, at this point, I don't think we care about trading. I think it's not even, nothing but a face thing, and next turn, this man should be Pepsi. Yeah, whip that out. Alrighty. 
He should be Pepsi next turn, or at least Coca Coma. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking man gag. Okay, next turn, Mac Teron deals free extra. We have Eladari from hand, including the Porsche Desperado, so that's like 4 10 damage from hand. Okay, he missed it. Good news is the Eladari Inquisitor is gonna slap the taunt and is still able to go face, because that's that's why we like him so much. So yeah, played a two mana Parsh Desperado, three mana Eladari, hero power. And your uh three mana Eladari rushes the taunt. And that still allows him to go face afterwards as well. What a hero power. Hero power go face, everything goes face. G fucking G, my guy. Yeah, like I said, the Ziliax is literally an entire game plan on its own, and you got to witness it firsthand. Yeah, he stuck around and did, did the lot of work. I mean, we had a pretty convenient board for him to stuck around, like uh, having a 0 3 on the board and a 7 health, very hard to deal with for them. With a, they don't have a single card to deal with it, so he had to be lucky to get something like a slam and a execute kind of deal. And he had nothing of the sort. What the fuck? Three warriors in a row as soon as you queue a demon hunter. Sure, game. That's how it goes. <laughs> hunter is actually favored against the warriors, by the way. Just saying. We didn't see a single one. Okay. Um, is it worth keeping grass even at four costs? Against the warrior, I think it's not a bad idea, even going first. It's very low, actually, on the win rate, but uh, I I would still hold on to it. And that's all. If you had, like... Or trash. Okay. Where's my little mech boy? Is that... Oh, here he is. Yeah, the little mech boys. Yeah, that helps. Let's whip him out then. Run it back, Ziliax. Would be nice. No reason to be wasting through Fell and Flame. In some cases, through Fell and Flame can also be used straight up just for the extra plus one plus one against certain classes if you really want to tempo the shit out of them, but I don't think this is one of those classes. There he is. There's the guy. Um, okay. I mean, in that case, this 2-1 living is actually going to be somewhat important. Hmm. I wonder if it's the dumbest thing in the world to actually red card this 2-3, man. Just because we have the Ziliax lined up like that. It really sounds dumb, not going to lie, but it kind of makes a good amount of sense in this case. Yeah, let's red card the 2 free and hero power face. <laughs> like, you really yeah, don't have extra minion on the board like that. Because if you don't, he can just blade storm it or poke it with that and uh, blast charge to execute it. Wouldn't be great. He still could just straight up bash this right now and kill it off the board, but it's one extra card. He has to be spending Chill. on his board instead of just hero powering. Okay, a gold banner. It's not that bad because you can actually throw Fell and Flame with the 2 1 onto it. So, yeah, we're playing the Ziliax, and you're playing the 0 mana through Fell and Flames on the 2 1. Still on the 2 1, I would rather keep Ziliax full health here. Because uh, if you damage it, he can just have Blast Charge and Execute Excavate kind of deal. That's about it. Makes sense. Alright, now I just need the other little fella to show up. The other little mech boy. Yeah, this time on curve. This time before it's too late. Otherwise, we have to play the main part of the deck as the well, backup. <laughs> we're stranger to doing that. We're kind of into that shit. Okay. There you go. Oh my goodness. Yeah, equip the weapon, and your face is gonna be killing the 2-3, that way we remain with a 1 health minion on the board, so he can just straight up blaze storm. And go face for the big boy damage. This guy's actually the MVP. It is. He's like the enabler. Next this turn, it's fucking <laughs> damage if this guy doesn't answer it. What kind of answers could he even have with 4 mana? He could have had sl one mana slam and a two mana blast charge. 
Okay. But he has no such yeah, thing. G fucking G, Zilly. Control this, ya filthy casual. Jesus, the little Zilly did good. Alright, so when... When is someone gonna make a Zilliax Demon Hunter deck without the yeah, Wii Fit Shop? <laughs> Hunter deck. There's a Zilliax Rogue deck actually out there, which is actually again starting to pop off. Uh, that's actually somewhat interesting, but still, uh, I'd say this one is probably the superior deck still. People ask me if I played Window Shop. Oh, you mean that that Zilliax deck? Yeah, it's pretty, good. <laughs> pretty good against Warriors, yeah. isn't it? The Zilliax Chopper deck. Would like to buy Zilliax. I swear to god, if this is another warrior. Okay, a fellow demon hunter connoisseur. This ends now. You dare speak to me? Hmm, so I have the coin this time. We are at um, the coin, the weapon sounds great in that case. Drone is fine, and we're not playing the Instrument deck on turn two, so I guess Spirit of the Team is not the dumbest thing I've heard today. We can just drop Metamorphosis, I guess. Okay. Okay, just what I was afraid of. He's doing things. Okay, that's a nice top deck, actually. Let's just do that then. The drone is not even... Uh... Uh, contesting this board, so might as well just straight up kill it. Okay. A little bit of a tasticle. Okay, there's that decision um, we're talking about. We are going second, so we might be actually behind on the board. Out of these metamorphoses makes a decent amount of sense. I mean, you run it in the deck after all, but in this case, I might actually consider Emulation Aura. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. In the mirror matchup, it's actually quite tricky. The first guy to play the Window Shopper uh, is going to be looking for the damaging stuff, and the second guy to play the Window Shopper is going to be looking for the healing stuff. So, if you get to play your Window Shopper first, you're looking for Mactaridons, you're looking for uh, Eldari Inquisitors, the 6-5 Taunt that gets discounted to one mana. Uh, but if you're uh, second on the board and you're behind, you're going to be looking for the Terror, you're going to be looking for the guy that gives you lifesteal, that kind of deal. So it's a little bit of a tricky matchup. Gotta be careful not to botch it. Uh, he has the weapon but can't play it just yet, so I think you can go with the two mana spirit of the team and... Do we even care about killing this? I think you kinda do. Yeah, play the spirit of the team and your face can kill the 1-2 for now. It's not that amazing of a play, but... You wouldn't coin out the weapon? We are coining out the weapon next turn for sure. Okay. But this turn we didn't have the mana for it. It's nerfed. How much does that nerf actually affect it? Because well, the stats are still pretty good, right? I mean, it, the stats are nothing to write home about even at 3 mana. But the effect is what we really want here and a whole turn later for that to happen, not the smallest. Not the smallest of nerfs. Yeah, coin out. And you could even consider using the zero mana to actually make the taunt into a 1-4 to kill off this 2-1. I'm not sure we should be doing that though. It's so much better using it on the window shopper. But next turn this guy is just gonna be equipping a weapon anyway. Hmm. Yeah, just go face chill. Don't don't use the fruit felon flame. That's about it. Next turn you could be discovering some uh, good stuff out of your shopper. Okay. Your face goes face. And let's see what the window shopper has to say about himself. That toy was made just for me. Ooh, that's nasty. The Abyssal Basis is only gonna be one mana for you right now, so that's the biggest amount of tempo you can plop on the board, so let's do that then. Play it on the left side. And uh, if you actually give it the zero mana Felon Flames, it's gonna be even harder for this man to deal with. 
So let's do that. Get make it into a 7-6 and kill off the 2-1 with it. And if he wants to attack his face into him, it, it's gonna be costing him a bit. That's all. I like the sound of that. I'll respect him if he does it. I'd probably do it. Put it here. I mean, if he doesn't have anything better to do, what else can he do? He wants to be. I'd probably do it and lose the game, himself. but I'd still do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to, don't you? Guess not. Okay, never mind. Let's slow him down a bit. Doesn't allow him to drop his chopper, so there's that. And we have six on the board, which is nice. Okay. Ooh, another weapon, but it's not even equipable for us right now, so it's not that hot. Let's, uh... Huh, wait a minute. Nah, fuck it. Played a, played a one mana window shop around the left. I grew impatient. Oh, there we go. We're the Grab the mag. Sweet. Put it Check in, it in the middle. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, we want the weapon. We do. Play the play the instrument back on the left side and hero power face everything. That's gonna take care of the free free. Yeah, hero power face everything sounds fine. That's all. You gotta be careful not to overcommit for straight up damage and nothing else here because, like I said, he has the opportunity to actually play. Uh, the the terror that life steals him. So right now this 6-5 would be the first minion to attack into it. So it's gonna straight up kill it like that. I'm the perfect okay, does not play the terror there. He might try to be greedier than that. He is probably gonna have the zero to rush his 6-5 into our 6-5 because he's not a big fan of taking extra six. If he is, we're a big fan of helping him. There's that terror, it only heals him for a one. Does he get the zero? He's down. He just... Doesn't get the zero, get fucked then. Cool. Okay, how much damage can we muster right now? What do you think the play is? Um, honestly, I don't know, so I'd probably just equip this and go hard on the face. Personally, I don't know if that's the correct decision. Okay, where are you using the burning had... heart? Hmm. Burning heart. Uh, probably just on his guy here, so this yeah, of thing kills it. Of course, gonna kill yeah. it like that easily as well. So yeah, use the one mana burning heart on the 6-5. And just hero power go fast with everything. Uh, I noticed you uh, did not unequip the weapon when uh, we said we're starting with a burning heart. Go fast, it's not a problem. Uh, if you want to not play a card, just drag it back to your hand. Okay. That's that's a way to cancel it. Like, Because uh, I have a feeling you uh, panicked there and didn't know how to return it to your hand, right? Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, so, just drag it back to your hand and then unclick it and it's gonna return. Zeh. Okay, and this guy got outclassed, outmatched. Just lost the race for the window shopper. Yeah. He was not even in the race, I feel. Okay, against the Death Knight. Gotta be careful against those. What are you thinking about this hand? Um, I kind of just want my dude, my weapon guy. So, yeah, kind of down exactly. just the area where everything. Hold on. Yeah. You either want a one drop or the weapon guy kind of deal. Okay, that's an improvement. Okay. okay, we even get 
the Zilliax, that might work. Problem. Let's whip out the spirit of the team here. That's gonna give you a great way to deal with the board for now. And your face kills it. And you can go face with the 2-2. Two -two. I wouldn't really give it the zero mana to make it a 3-3 free -free in the end of the day. We are against the... Uh, Death Knight, they have plenty of free damage idiots. <clears throat> this town's only big enough for one miracle salesman. Be mm -hmm. stand strong. And back to the four drops, huh? Your face kills the 2 2, go face with your 2 2, that's about it. Not much else we should be considering. Okay, let's hear it now. Let's take it. Hero Power Demon Hunter strikes again. Trap rotation. Well, that leaves us with a 2 1 unless he decides to kill the totem instead. I mean, if, unless he decides to kill a 2 2 instead. He does the little booger. And that's gonna be a lovely Zilliax for us right about now, I can tell you that much. Tempo Zilly. Zilly time! Yep. Yeah, just go face. Technically, we could even consider giving Zilliax the rush right now just because it's gonna make it into a 12 8 next turn. How does he kill it next turn? He doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah, give it the Fru Felon Flames. <laughs> There's that bullshit. Yeah, that extra damage. Damage. Frozen. Still, six damage, bitch. Have plenty more where that came from. Um, I think it's a tempo window shopper kind of play. Play it in the left side. That toy was made just for me. Observer of Mysteries could cock block him for a turn. Let's try that. If it gives you counter spell or the fire shit, it would. Uh, counter his poisonous turn. Yeah. Is this guy gonna take 12 to the freeze now, or is he gonna play a poison for just a single hero power? These are the questions that keep me up at night. There's the poison idiot into a hero power. Freezes that, still takes it like a man though. What are we thinking now? Definitely need to get rid of this 2-4, that's for sure. But uh, how are we going to approach this? Let's check the one mana window shopper. I grow impatient. That's a mag. Yeah, grab the mag. But uh, how are we playing it right now? Yeah, play the mag in the middle and uh, equip the weapon and go face with it. We're ignoring this shit. We don't care about anything on the board any anymore. Mag is gonna okay. be clearing him, so it's pretty nice.
Sure, buddy. That's quite the big removal you just waste for a measly 6-2, but what do I know? Sucks to be that guy. He does gain a bunch of corpses, he might be lining up for his 2-2 two -two idiots, but we have the mag plus the red card, so I, I see a pretty bright future for us. Okay, that's all, that's all up to you, bud. Yeah, he's kinda dead right now. It's literally one-off lethal with just the hero Baron, he knows it. Well, actually, uh, he is gonna swing with the weapon, so we won't be able to crack this weapon out, so Kane is not lethal straight up, you're gonna need the top deck. I don't even know what. Yeah, it's not gonna be lethal just yet. Cool. He's freezing, he's life stealing. Okay. So, yeah, nowhere near lethal just yet. Uh, you can tread about a snake well once. See what that leads us. Not that amazing. The five man observer of mysteries is fine. Play him on the left side. No reason to use that, honestly. Okay, we got a couple yeah. of hunter shits. They're kind of bad, but it could actually work out. Uh, I mean, we could do it. Yeah, sure, let's do it so we can maybe find some card draw. No card draw, you say? <laughs> hmm. I guess we're running through Fell and Flames for a reason. Yeah, take that for later. For later? Yeah, no reason to waste the try okay. now. Hey, I can see why you like this guy. He's, he's kind of bold. Yeah, the mag is absolutely game-breaking. Honestly, I was expecting maybe it getting nerfed instead, which would have been the shittiest thing they could have done there. Okay, please attack into the 6-5. <laughs> if only. Sad. Come on, hero the 6-5 at least. Help a brother out. Against me, bitch. We're getting kind of low on that health area. We're actually on a timer here. He is killing us in a couple of turns, but uh, right now we kill him. Do you see the lethal? There you go. Yeah. Gonna record this. And then, yeah. his mouth. Nice. Easy. Hide behind your servants. I will still no reason to do anything else. You can't even attack with your face, so. And just that turn. I could do, I could squeeze out more damage if I needed though by no. using that right, and then you use can. this. Well, uh, for a finale, yeah, we could have squeezed one more, but... Okay, well, all around that was a nice run. We still managed to shave quite a few spots, all the way down to 7-5. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely is feeling a little bit more awkward now after the nerf. That's a lot of 4 drops to have to juggle with instead of having a free mana weapon. It is definitely gonna be missed.